A racially offensive video is casting a cloud over the Boston Police Department. The clip introduces a white officer in dog and says black people have met their match. The video has been denounced by community leaders and local officials. The video is also under investigation and questions remain, especially about who's responsible for producing it and getting it posted. Among those speaking out about the video are the founder and executive director of the New Democracy Coalition, Kevin Peterson, and the president and CEO of the Urban League of Eastern Massachusetts, Darnell Williams. Uh, thank you both very much for being with us. Good to be here. Thanks for having us. Uh, Darnell, we, we, we've seen the video, but we don't know much else about how it got there and who put it together. So what, what do we know? Well, what we know is that I guess uh, the individuals who were responsible for its production thought they were doing kind of like a Friday night uh, uh, comedy special. And, and for the first part, it was kind of a spoof and didn't really, it was kind of innocuous and harmless. But then it took a turn for the worse when it said, uh, it showed some scenes of a couple of young people with hoods on, black males, and then some, uh, not scantily clad, but Caribbean festival black females in the video, and then said, you met your match and we look out this summer. So it took something that could have been funny and humorous and it took a racial turn uh, for the worse. And it really wasn't the, the brightest idea for somebody to try to put that together. That's what we know. And, and Kevin, I, I guess the, the, the main thing here is that this depicts uh, all black people negatively. Yeah, it stereotypes uh, black people across the board. And then, then it takes a historical turn to by raising the issue of dogs uh, as, a, as a weapon, so to speak, towards black people. We know about those images from the Civil Rights Movement. Dr. King and others marched in Birmingham. Dogs were uh, let loose on, on black people. And um, that image is, is searing within black consciousness in Boston, but across the, across the country. So to raise that particular uh, uh, image is entirely uh, offensive and threatening. Uh, uh, Darnell, what about the, the whole tone of this too? This is about, this is about the summertime, and, and, and this is like this sort of car almost cartoonish expectation that you know, we have this hostile element out there and the police are gonna be trying to do something. I, I mean, I mean the, how did you feel about that? Um, other than having a burr in my saddle, there's some stronger words that I would normally Hughes, but not in this form, that I was upset, it was disturbing, it was very troubling, because even the categorization on the front side of the video clip is good versus evil. Mm -hmm. and, and so that to me was, was, well, we're the good guys and those are the evil people. And then he lumped everybody together, all black people as being evil. That is very, very, and as a black male, that's just so just disturbing, considering what is happening across this nation with law enforcement and African-American males has not been a, um, a storybook ending. And so it's very, very troubling on that note. And so really you, you, you have a very raw feeling in your spirit and in your soul that this needs to be dealt with, needs to be dealt with swiftly. And we believe that the uh, commissioner and the police uh, superintendent in chief have responded, and I think in a very positive way, and, and they're dealing with it. It is, it is a, um, an, an existential issue uh, specifically in terms of the making of this video. But over the last couple of years, these racial um, assaults upon black people have been rising. We look at uh, Boston Latin School a couple of years ago where young girls were protest protesting about uh, being treated unfairly on racial terms. You look at um, the issue around um, racial um, name calling at Fenway Park just earlier this year, Michael Shea, the Saturday Night Live uh, comedian, calls Boston the most racist city that he's ever been in, 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 the, in the country. So there is this layering effect that really sort of surfaces uh, a subterranean boil of uh, racial animosity uh, within Boston generally. It's a good thing that the mayor has uh, a couple weeks ago announced a, um, another tour of racial talks because Boston certainly needs it. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Kevin Peterson of the New Democracy Coalition and Darnell Williams of the Urban League. Uh, Darnell, when, when I looked at the clip, uh, I quickly made an assumption uh, that, that reflected pretty badly on the police department, of course. But, but on the other hand, uh, 
since we don't really know yet who, who generated this, who produced it, whether any police officer even approved it, uh, is it maybe too soon to start saying that, that we're, we're really worried about some widespread problem? Well, I think it is. I think what we have to do is we have to recognize that we saw that they were in a police cruiser. We don't know if that's a Boston police cruiser. We don't know who shot it, who origin. We know that it was distributed to other officers. One of the officers happened to be an African-American. And so we do know those facets of it. And as a former flyer and fire commissioner and disciplining firefighters, one of the things that you do or what you learn to do is not to jump to conclusions. Let the investigation take its course. We're watching, we're gonna monitor it, and we're gonna hold the people accountable. But I think that this is, if I were an African-American and I would uh, attach to a case with that particular officer, I would get a good lawyer because I would say that we have some problems in Houston here with this particular officer. Uh, Kevin, uh, another possibility is that maybe somebody in the department was responsible for generating this, but you might say, well, if it's one person or two or three, uh, it's an isolated, it's, it's, a, it's a rogue element, it, it, it's not a big picture problem, or, or is it? Well, let's, let's assume that, um, that this did emanate from the Boston Police Department. If that's true, it is indicative of a culture within the Boston Police Department uh, that's had a bad reputation for a long time in terms of hiring uh, on the low and, 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 and uh, middle management um, levels in terms of um, police personnel, um, and has had a bad reputation among some sectors um, in the community uh, where they have uh, harassed people or they, or they definitely just have a, ne a negative um, um, uh, um, uh, perspective um, directed towards them uh, because they're seen as uh, intruders. So um, if you look at the larger culture in which this accusation is uh, placed, um, you can fairly draw a conclusion that it might be part of the general uh, culture of the Boston Police Part Department that needs to be fixed. Darnell Williams, how do you fix a culture? I, I think the key is that we have, I don't think this is just a, a solo issue for mm -hmm. Boston. Boston mm -hmm. right. has its storybook issues from 73 forward. So I don't have to go down that path because yeah. we know it all so well. But this is a, a national issue of race. So if I'm in uh, Cleveland, if I'm in Baltimore, no if I'm in Ferguson, right. I'm in Baltimore, I'm in DC or Detroit or Chicago, these issues play over and over and over again and the results are the same. So when you say, how do we change the culture? We have to change the, the biases that are associated with the individuals who don't have a comfortable interface with the people they're supposed to protect and serve. So I'm not ready to, to, to put a blanket over the entire department because I know some police officers. My niece is a police officer. So I don't have any animus towards police officers. I yeah. have animus against police officers who cross the line and don't carry out the function of their duties. And it's our job, if we change the culture, is by constantly prodding constantly advocating for justice for everybody. We don't want anything special. We don't want special treatment. We want to be treated fairly. People talk to you in certain ways when they approach the car, hand on the gun. I mean, I may, I may have ran a yellow light. I didn't run a red light. <laughs> but I understand the precautions, but we're, we're treated in such a different way Stop that, and frisk. The yeah, ACLU yeah. study um, just a couple years ago yeah. showed that black boys across the city of Boston were disproportionately stopped um, on the streets, um, and maybe not for any uh, legitimate reason than to um, to surveil them. So I think a preponderance of events and a preponderance of um, uh, a, a administrative uh, issues within the Boston Police Department for me. Mm -hmm. indicates that there is a, a, a culture of racism. Now that's not um, Mayor Walsh's, um, uh, it doesn't originate from Mayor Walsh because he didn't start, start racism, but Mayor Walsh is the mayor and he, is, uh, and he has picked up the racial dog, for example, so he owns it. He said at the beginning of his administration that he would address the issues of racial divisions within the city. Now we have a very clear example uh, this incident of what may be a systemic problem within, within the, a, a public institution, the police department, and he must take, I believe, r a radical stance around ensuring that it's eliminated. As he did in, in Boston, Latin, Boston Latin School a couple of years ago. I, I admire him for the, the steps that he, he took. 
uh, we encourage him to take even um, significant steps, more, more significant steps around the Boston Police Department. Dr. Nelly, uh, the police department itself recently came out with some figures showing, like Kevin mentioned, that, that people of color were more likely to be stopped or encountered or observed. Right. And they want us to believe that this is justified. There's a reason for it. Maybe it has to do with you know, known gang members or something or neighborhoods where there's more police presence. But talk about that trust issue. They, they want people to believe this is doing the job they're supposed to do. It is a multi-layered response to that, Chris. I think the key is that you have black people and you have hot spots. You have a gang activity and you have crime. And if you look at the statistics in the city of Boston, you can come down, um, I would say, Warren Street or Tremont Street or Washington Street to Blue Hill Avenue towards Dorchester and Mattapan, and you will be able to track those hot spots. Now, do, do I, as an individual and as an agency leader, want to see those hot spots cleaned up? Absolutely. But what I don't want to see is a disproportionate stopping and uh, investigating of individuals who happen to look like me but are not doing anything. These kids are dressed a certain way. They get stopped. Sometimes it's on the T. Sometimes it's not. So it doesn't mean that we're going to, you can't criminalize everyone because they're in a racial group. And that's where sometimes I think it does happen that way. And it's our job to try to fix it. And if we see it, we need to address it. And then we highlight it. But I, I'm, I'm willing to say that I am not so naive to think that there are not some individuals who happen to uh, be in a police uniform that are not racist. I clearly know that. I've experienced it. But I'm not going to paint the entire department with that same brush, but that they own it. And it's their job and our job to make sure we root it out. Kevin, uh, the mayor has made some strong comments, uh, uh, negative comments about the clip. Right. Uh, Called what, it foolish, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. What does he need to do beyond that? Well, I, I think he needs to continue uh, to call it foolish. But I think he also needs um, to uh, make a very goodwill effort in addressing particularly the African-American community in the city of Boston. I've suggested uh, that he, for example, take out a full-page ad in the Bay State Banner, which is uh, a major media source uh, within the black community, and restate um, his apology, but also state a, a, a commitment to uh, looking at systemic racism within the public institutions uh, within Boston. That includes our public education system. That includes the fire department. That includes the police department which from my perspective and based on a number of studies over the last five years are indicative of entrenched uh, racism. Now you can't uh, blame everybody uh, within an institution of racism, but you certainly can uh, identify institutional racism and the expression of it and then uh, look for ways to address that culture and ways to try to eliminate it. Thank you both very much, Kevin Peterson and Darnell Williams. We'll Thank have, you. We'll have more news in just a moment. Thank you.